Okay, so uh, right now we will discuss uh, uh, making oracles for uh, Simon's algorithm for those two to one functions which can be implemented uh, with the uh, with, with the secret uh, bit string p, uh, such that uh, you know the two inputs which are related by the XOR operation map to the same uh, output by this function. So as we saw, you know, in the previous lecture, that not all two to one function can be thought of uh, as uh, uh, a function linked by uh, a secret bit string. So this will only be applicable to those two to one functions with, uh, which have the same output for two inputs, which are related by uh, uh, exhoring uh, uh, with a secret bit string. Okay, so uh, let me share my screen. Okay, so let's see. Oracles for the Simon's problem. So let me repeat the problem. So the, the black box function that we have to implement for the Simon algorithm is like this, that we have uh, an input X, which is N bit. And then we have another set of N bits input, which is initialized to input uh, zero. And we want this input to appear exactly at the output. It means the, the, the quantum bits or quantum wires that are here, at the end, they should end up in the same state. So which means if you apply any X gate here, you have to reverse that X gate later on. So because so that this the input and the output are the same. And then the, the function f of x, which is implemented by this oracle, must appear at the state over here. So this is where this f of x should appear. All right, so I'm going to give the scheme, you know, that the, the Kiskit has proposed, and the scheme works like this. That uh, you, let, let's talk about three bit input. So suppose we have these three uh, bit input. So the first thing that we should do is copy this input to the other three bits that we have. They're all initialized to zero. So we can do that copying very easily by using a C naught controlled by each of this input bit. So let's say, I have a C naught and this first bit here controlled by the first bit here. And you can easily see since this is zero, remember in general, the quantum copying operation doesn't work without destroying the initial state. But for special cases, for example, if, the, if this, you know, this target bit in, is in zero state, then whatever this is, is going to appear here. So suppose if it is zero, nothing will happen to this. So this zero will go to zero. And if it is one, this zero will turn to one. So over here, whatever is here is going to be appearing here. And, and let's see what happens in general. So suppose this line is uh, some alpha and this is zero. So where alpha is some state, you know, A zero, B one, and I can combine them. So this becomes A zero, zero, B one, zero. So this is control, this is target. So this is control, this is target. So this is zero, so zero remains zero. And this becomes zero, zero, and 
this is one, this becomes zero. So this becomes one. So now they are actually in, in an entangled state. So, so this will work if uh, you know uh, the, the each one of these you know qubit is in uh, zero or one state. This this copying uh, sort of operation. Otherwise, uh, this will become an entangled state. So we can implement this you know c knotting with respect to uh, to this one. So what this will do that each of this you know qubit over here, since it's going to be uh, an XOR operation with this input. So if, if this is zero, so zero will go to zero. If this is one, so zero will become one. So this is the first step. The second step is uh, multiplying, is, uh, is putting another set of C naughts or inverted C naughts. Inverted C naught mean that the control is uh, uh, exercise if the control bit is in zero and control is not exercised if the control bit is in one. And it's like this. So suppose you have the secret bit string as one, one, zero. So you scan this bit string from the least significant to the most significant in this order. And you find what's the place of the first bit one. So you see this is zero, so keep going. So you encounter one, so stop. So when you stop it here, so this one is the second qubit. So you come to the second qubit. And then with respect to the second qubit, you implement C naughts on the remaining two bits uh, like this. So if this is one, this is one. So this you implement a C naught like this, and then see if the next one is one. So you implement another C naught with respect to this one. So this is how you can implement this uh, uh, Simon Oracle. And you can actually check by working out for each of the input that we do get the output that we want. There is another option for, well, let's first take another example and then we will see another option. So let's say if the secret bit string is 101. So this first part, this C naught, this C naught, this C naught is always there. For this second part, you start from this, you know, uh, right side and go toward this bit string and, and stop when you encounter the first qubit one. So this, the first one is one, so you stop right here. And then uh, you stop here. And with respect to this one, you implement a C naught over here and a C naught over here. Let me make another circuit for this, I think. That would be cleaner. So for P101, this is the first three working qubits and Celia qubit. So this C naught is always going to be there. And this is going to be there. This is, so these C naughts are there. Now the first qubit is one. So with respect to the first, I implement a C naught on the first one. The second is zero, so no C naught here. The third is one. So I implement a C naught on the third one. So this is how this oracle can be implemented. And I would like to you to actually check that this does really do what we are saying. That uh, uh, if I give you know different inputs here, and if the input for the two inputs that are related by this relation y is equal to x plus p, the output is going to be the same. Now. Uh, we can also, you know, instead of implementing the C naught, we can implement uh, the this operation. So okay. So instead of C naught, we can implement this inverted C naught. And this will do the same job as before.
The only difference is that this f of x would be different. So the we will get the same f of x for the two inputs that are related by uh, this XOR with P operation. The only difference is this, that now our f of x would be different. So if I go back here, oh, okay, so that's the that was the other page. So if we compare this f of x and f of x with the C naught, the, the difference is like this. For example, if the one function is like this, the other would be, you know, uh, so this is not the right one. So if let's say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if this is then this is same and this and this same, then then same. So so we have one f of x implemented with let's say c naught, and if instead of c naught we use this uh, c naught uh, with an x before and after then we are still getting the same output for the same input as before. But now if, for example, uh, the input is this and this, and maybe this and this, this, this and this. So maybe for the second case, The function is like this, but it still has the same output for the same two input that it had before. The only difference is the value of f of x is different. Okay, so there are two main steps to this oracle. The number one is this C naught always with respect to the first qubit, and then the selective C naughts. Sorry, this one is wrong. So this has to come with this through this thing. So the control is fixed. Control is only with respect to the same qubit, uh, which, has, which is coming at the same location of the first one. And the C naughts are going to be applied according to then this list. So with this Oracle, we are able to implement this uh, desired secret bit string P. Let me now show it on Kiskit, but uh, stop if somebody has any question. Uh, sir? Mm -hmm. Uh, so earlier our problem was to find p, and now yeah. we, are, we are taking its value and then we are uh, making the oracle. So, yes. So p was required uh, for us, and now we are taking it. As a, You're as absolutely a right, but my question is that why nobody asked when we were implementing Bernstein Wazirani algorithm? You remember we encoded the secret bit string there as well, even though we were trying to find it. So this will always be the case. No, but this will not always be the case. Remember, the problem is that we have a black box. Okay, so this is an ex excellent question. So the problem, uh, the Dijkstra problem, or the Bernstein Wazidani problem, or the Simon's problem, they all have a black box that implements a certain function, and the algorithm doesn't care how that function has been implemented, and it's hidden from the outside world. Okay. Uh, but now we have to, you know, run it. So we have also to construct sort of that black box. So uh, in future, you know, you can say that uh, maybe one person, so you can uh, uh, ask if you imagine it like this. For example, uh, I have a quantum computer uh, in my office and you have a quantum computer in your office. And suppose in my com quantum computer, I have implemented this function. You don't know, uh, you don't have any idea of what C naughts or what circuits are at, uh, anything. All I give you access to, okay, you can access my quantum computer, you can send certain inputs and my quantum computer will send you whatever the output is. It will not tell you what the circuit is, okay? It will only tell you uh, the output for a given input. And then your job is to guess what P I have implemented. So my quantum computer would be a black box for you. So the the idea is this, that if you, uh, and and actually, so we can uh, be a more, more, bit more precise. You can imagine that this black box can be accessed both quantum mechanically and classically as well. Okay, and your job is to figure out this P or this circuit, so to say. 
So classically, you need uh, two power n curies to this black box. Quantum mechanically, you need one curie here and then n uh, cube uh, post-processing steps uh, on a classical computer. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, but now since we are implementing everything on a single quantum computer, uh, we are specifying sort of the problem there as well. So, but in, in, in the actual application, you can imagine that the black, this part is not known to, to the rest of the algorithm. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So uh, let me say a little bit more about uh, Simon's problem. So this is actually an example of what we call a hybrid algorithm as well. So. because it has a quantum part. And it has a classical part. Because quantum car part will give us this histogram, which will, let's say 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then there, there's always going to be a histogram at zero. So we will get this. But from this, we will only know this thing that the P into zero, zero is zero. This P into zero, one, zero is zero. This P into zero, one, one is zero. And the P into one, one, one is zero. And then we have to solve this problem on a classical computer to find you know this P, which is these three uh, you know, values of the bits. So in general, this is a problem of type this, that AX is equal to P. So this requires using, let's say, Gaussian elimination method, uh, operations of the order of N power Q. Okay, so this is an algorithm, which is actually a simple example of a hybrid algorithm that partly runs on a quantum computer and partly on a classical computer. Okay, so let me now show its implementation on Qiskit. So there, let's stop sharing this part. We start sharing Jupiter. Okay, so here, uh, I start with, you know, importing this uh, quantum circuit, execute air, basic air. Let's execute this one. And now here you see, I'm trying to make up uh, an Oracle with the, uh, let's say some bit string. And for the purpose of, you know, this thing, let's say we make this Oracle with uh, 110. So the bit string, which I was calling P in the uh, program is BS over here. So this BS is 110. So total number of, you know, uh, bits in my algorithm are six. And I have introduced this, you know, number P, which is uh, half of the N. And I have to take its integer part because uh, if I don't take integer part, this P is, you know, a floating number and then the circuit gives problem. So Simon Oracle number one. So I uh, start with a quantum circle circuit of N bits. So these are total number of bits. And then, uh, so actually there's probably a better way of working with this. So let's say instead of P, let me call it, N3 and then call this quantum circuit with two star N and then here you see that I'm implementing this uh, CX gate on from the from the ith to i plus nth qubit. So this is the first part. So this part that I have these three uh, control X gates coming from, you know, each of the working qubit to this in qubit, the three over here. 
and then uh, I start looking through this bit string because I want to find the location of this first non-zero bit string one. So I go to p minus one. So p right now is n. So I go to n minus one. Uh, so n minus one is two. So I start uh, from this number two because the indexing happens zero, one, two. So if I start from two, I start at the end. So I, I start at the end and then uh, keep going down all the way to zero. Even though you see, I have specified that I want to go to minus one. I'm specifying that I want to go to minus one because uh, Python goes uh, to uh, one less than the last place that you have specified. Okay, so now I'm doing what I'm saying that when you encounter uh, the bit in the bit string as one, uh, over there, you, you know, uh, fix some M, which is equal to P. And uh, this P is actually now equal to N. And then I start from again, N minus one. Now, this is the part where I implement uh, control X with respect to those bits, which are one. So this is, let's stop printing this. And uh, so I had started from K and uh, you can see that whenever I am not able to find that uh, the bit string is not one, I'm incrementing the K by one so that I know the value of the bit string with respect to which I have to implement this uh, control X gate. And this M, you know, uh, was initialized to N because uh, uh, I have to start implementing the uh, qubits from the third one. So if n is three, I start uh, from, from m is equal to three. And then in each of this uh, proce uh, process, I keep incrementing m and wherever bit string is one, I implement this, uh, you know, uh, gate. So just to show it, let's say, what happens if I have a longer one? So if n is five, So you can see the circuit over there. So if n is five, so there are five C naughts that are always there. And then I kept looking for the first qubit, which is one. So it is second qubit, which is one. So all other C naughts are with respect to this uh, uh, n is equal to uh, one or, or the second qubit. And then the qubits, uh, the C naughts on this part, on these, you know, in cilia qubits, are with the same order as specified here, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is how we can implement. So, but let me go back to the three qubit circuit. Okay. And here, you know, I'm saying that I can do the same I can design a similar uh, circuit using another oracle. And this time, before any CX, I apply an X gate first and then. I end it with an X gate again. So what this does, where's P? Okay, so. No. So you see that this is the same Oracle as this one, except that there's an X here and X here. So this also implements the same bit string. The only difference now is this, that uh, the value of the f of x has changed, as I was, you know, uh, talking in uh, when I was discussing oracles, that you can have uh, uh, many different functions that implement the same secret bit string. Okay, so here is the algorithm, which is uh, very simple. That I have this circuit uh, with n 
with two n quantum bits and only n classical bit because I will be doing measurements only once. So let's keep n three. So this is n. So I first apply these header marks, and then you can see that uh, I add this uh, oracle to the circuit Simon by command. This Simon is equal to Simon plus uh, SO2. And then I do measurements for the first three qubits. Now, one thing you see here that I didn't do any measurements on Q3, Q4, Q5, as I was talking about uh, when we were analyzing the algorithm. And the reason is this, that any qubit that is not measured can always be assumed to be measured by, uh, uh, by a principle, uh, by an inference from the you know, postulates of quantum mechanics, which I'm not going to prove. Uh, uh, but this can be easily verified, that any qubit uh, which is not measured can essentially be assumed to be in a measured state, because ultimately, uh, the circuit is going to decay and uh, it's going to be, you know, uh, in, in a sort of measured state because it is entangling and interacting with the environment around anyway. So we don't need to explicitly measure it. It's uh, ultimately going to be measured anyway by the environment. So uh, it can be assumed to be measured. So all we have to do is just put measurements in front of uh, those qubits, which we really want to, you know, work with at the end. Okay, so this is uh, the circuit and let's uh, simulate it uh, on the simulator uh, using the usual you know, commands. Now I see that I get uh, an output like this. So let's try to analyze this output. And for that, let me share the whole screen. So this is my output. So what is happening is that our output is non-zero for zero, 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 but zero, zero, you know, it's not going to help us. So just think about zero, zero, one, 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 zero, and one, triple one. So let's analyze this algorithm. So I had uh, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one. What these are, there's something else. Zero, zero, one, 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 zero. Yes. So it means I have no this information that uh, P dot zero, zero, one is zero. P dot one, one, zero is zero. P dot one, one, one is zero. So since this is a three bit system, I can easily solve it, you know, by hand. So this means that P two plus P one So this means that P2, P2, P1, P0, 0, 0, 1 is 0, which means that P2 into 0 is 0, P1 into 0 is 0, P0 into 1 is P0, this is equal to 0. So this clearly tells us that P0 is equal to 0. So let's see what the second equation tells us. So this gives us that P2 plus P1 is equal to zero. Okay, so this means that either P2 is equal to P1 is equal to zero or P2 is equal to P1 is equal to one. Because if they're both one, then one plus one is two, which modulo two is zero. Or if they're both zero, so zero plus zero is zero. So we now have a possibility that P2, P1 are one, but let's check uh, from the second one. So this actually gives us the same equation as well, because P2 plus P1 plus P0 is equal to zero, but we have already seen that P0 is zero. So this tells us P2 plus P1 is equal to zero. So again, the same conclusion that it is possible that the function is uh, a two to one function. So if it is possible that the function is two to one, uh, it means that this is a two to one function. So we have this P string as one, one, zero. So just to, you know, have another example, let me do it for another string. So for example, I do it for zero, zero, one.
So this time, last time I used uh, Oracle one. So this time let's just use, uh, uh, last time I used SO2, let's say this time let's use SO1. So when I run this, I get uh, a non-zero uh, indices as 001, 110 and triple one. So 001, 110. So we now have 001, 110, triple one. 001, 110, triple one. And the Circuit is zero zero one. Okay, so let's see if we can infer from here. So this tells us that P naught is zero. This tells us that uh, P two plus P one is equal to zero. And this tells us that. P2 plus P1 equal to zero. Isn't it the same as we got before? 0, 0, 001110 1, 1, 0, triple one. Oh, I haven't even run it, sorry. I was just looking at the previous yes, uh, histogram. Okay, so this is actually 0, 0, 001010 0, 1, 0, and 011. 1, 1. So Zero 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 one zero one zero zero one one zero zero one. You can see how short my memory is. I can't even remember going from one screen to another screen. And zero one one zero one one. Okay. So this tells me that P naught is definitely zero. This tells me that P one is definitely zero. This tells me that uh, again, this doesn't tell me anything about P two, but P naught and P one are already zero. So P one plus P naught zero is satisfied because this is zero. This is zero. So it's still open from all of this thing that P2 could be either zero or P2 could be equal to one. So we have a possibility for this string P to be either zero, zero or one, zero, zero. So we are able to, you know, see that the bit string can be one, zero, zero, which means it's a two to one function. Okay, so in general, when you have, you know, a lot of bits, you won't be able to solve it, uh, you know, by hand, you might have to resort to uh, some Gaussian elimination or some other uh, matrix method. Okay, so any questions? Uh, sir? Mm -hmm. You use a different oracle this time. So, uh, can you stay with one oracle for all inputs? Uh, sorry? You used a different oracle for this input. This one this time. Earlier you used this two. Yeah, they're, they're the same except with this X gate. Let Okay, so if you want to see, you can, let's say, if I have this 100 zero zero and uh, it is this article with this XX and we can see what this circuit does. So this also gives us input 0, 0, 001010. 0, 1, 0, 0. So it's the same, same index. So it doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, sir. Okay, so 